Today, we are about to learn how to embrace the suck. We're gonna learn why embracing the suck is important and how you can do it in your lives. I'm Coach Colin, coolest high-performance coach in the world, and if you want the absolute best insights to the podcast and videos you love, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. This is episode 1212, David Goggins, Joe Rogan Experience. This is a good one. David is looser. He has these concepts. He's broken down more. He went from just building a business, trying to, to now he has dropped his book, and he's just in a whole different mode. I absolutely love it. Let's listen to this. Let's go. And then we get all soft and all these computers and shit. And we, start, and we start going away from the, the most powerful thing we have is our fucking brain, is our mind. And we don't use it anymore. So, you know, it's like everything has to be so quick. Yeah, you use your mind when it comes to certain things, right? But what you're saying is you don't use your mind when it comes to enduring. Exactly. That is it. You, yeah. you can't Google that shit. Right. Hey, let me Google how to suffer. <laughs> no. That ain't going to be in There's there, no brother. Answer. That ain't going to be in there. It could be in there. <laughs> There's no answer. It's not in there. It doesn't exist. No. Find yeah. some water, real cold. And what's interesting is that that is a mind thing. And people think of mind things. They think of calculating, mathematics. They think right. of literature. No, 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 no. There's many aspects to the mind. That's it. Don't yeah. overthink it. Yeah. Don't overthink it. Put your shoes on. Lace them up. <laughs> That's all you got to do, my friend. <laughs> Don't overthink the process. Yeah, but see, because you've overcome and because you've accomplished so much now that even when you you talk about that moment of like embracing that suck, like you see there's a big ass smile on your face. Like you've you've got a total different approach to it than the average person. Oh yeah. The average person when you talk to them about doing chin ups for 24 hours or anything right. fucking crazy, they don't look at it. They're like, oh. There's like a, a negative, a doom feeling. That's the thing about it, man. I talk about my book, Open Mindedness. What separates me from a lot of people is they go into an, a daunting task, and the task is overwhelming. Like when I heard the pull-up record was 4,020 pull-ups, and I was talking about breaking this record, people are like, oh, my God. I went right to a pen and paper. They go, what are you doing? I'm doing the math, man. What are you talking about? I'm open-minded to the fact that, okay, if I do five pull-ups in a minute for so many hours, I can get so many pull-ups in. How much time do I have to rest? I was breaking the math down. You have to be open-minded to the possibilities that I can do this. Once you shut your mind down to the possibility that it can be achieved, there's no way it can happen. So that's why my, my eyes and my body light up about things, because I know that if you're in a fight, you have to attack. You have to keep attacking. The enemy has to know he is not going to give up. You must break the soul of whatever the fuck is in front of you. That's what I realized. I was never breaking the soul of anything in front of me. So that's why I came up with a thing called Taking Souls in my book. I started to devise ways to break a soul of a human being, of, a, of an object, of, of, of whatever's in front of me. If you keep on attacking something, nothing wants to stand in front of anything that is relentless. Nothing. I love, I love when David Goggins gets into this. You've never seen David Goggins smile bigger than when he's talking about suffering which is to most people and to me is absolutely crazy like he's talking about f find some water real cold like he's talking about like a cold plunge like he's talking about lacing your shoes up and running 50 miles until you throw up until you shit yourself like he did he's talking about some wild stuff and honestly he never says to do what he did he said what he did is wild and don't try that at home um but he's talking about suffering and that's when he lights up and what I want people to know through this lesson is not just that David Goggins knows how to suffer and he's just this badass, but what could you achieve in life? What could you endure through if you could learn to light up and, and, and be happy about what you have to suffer through like he does? Now, I'm not talking about traumatic stuff. I'm not talking about domestic abuse and all sorts of horrible things like that. I'm not talking about stuff like that. I'm talking about some people suffer just going into their job every day, you know, or, 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 or the fact that they have to work out like they, they suffer through that. They suffer through working out. They suffer through running. They suffer through having to wake up every day at a certain time. They suffer. They suffer. They suffer in their day to day lives. 
If you could learn to light up the way Goggins lights up when it comes to suffering, what could you achieve in life? You know, what could you push through in life? If every day, let's say you hate your job right now, let's say the job sucks, but every day you woke up and the alarm clock went off at say 4.30 and you lit up, like you knew it sucked and you just went, oh man, this is going to be a rough one. And you were able to know that going through that day of, of enduring through that job and, and, the, and the shitty traffic and the, and the, the people flipping you off and, and the, the idiot pedestrians getting in your way and all of this stuff. If you could endure through that and be lit up through it, like, like what kind of days would you start to have if all of a sudden, and I'm not talking about living backwards and like the good things are all, all of a sudden bad to you. It's like the good things are good. And when you have to suffer through something, when you have to endure through something, an even better word, when you have to endure through things, that's a happy moment for you as well. It's like a win-win everywhere you go if you could learn to be like that. And I'm not saying I've learned to be like that. That's just the insight that I got from watching this clip, from listening to this so many times. What could we do with ourselves if we started to actually see the hard things we go through as great? Great, I get to, I, I can't lift this thing, fantastic. Oh, there's pain in my arms, amazing. Oh, I'm so happy. Whew, that guy didn't show up. We got to do double the work now. He didn't show up. Let's do it. Let's see if we can do this. Like, what if you started approaching things like that? I really do think that I know we're calling it suffering and we have such a negative connotation towards that and enduring. We have, you know, a negative connotation towards that too at times but i think if we could start lighting up like goggins did that the things that are so-called bad or suffering or enduring the things that you have to suffer and endure through you'd start to approach it with a more positive attitude you start to approach life with a more positive attitude because again back to what i said everything would be a win-win if things go good that's great if things are getting hard and i gotta trudge through that that's good too. It's like you start winning. It's like either things are going to be easy and smooth and we get through it, or they're going to be hard. And once I'm done doing the hard thing, I get better. It's like, if we can start having that type of mindset, what, what, what's the limits? What's the potential of that? You know, I've been listening to a lot of Jordan Peterson recently, not just for the podcast, but just in my own time. And it's like, he talks a lot about potential. And so does David Goggins. What's, what's the potential there? What could you all of a sudden become? What kind of person could you become? Like what kind of limits could you shatter in your life if you became that type of person, if that type of mindset? What does that look like? You know, what do you look like in that state? That state of smiling in the face of adversity? You know, who, who, who do you become? What does your life look like all of a sudden? Do you still work that job that that kind of sucks? Or now do you all of a sudden have the resolve and the grit to like pursue something bigger, different job, different industry, entrepreneurial? What does it look like? Promotion, you know? I don't know. I I really think that there is a a big potential for a lot of so-called regular people if we could take that mindset. Because again... Going all the way back, look at David Goggins. He learned to be that way, and look what he became. He became something really special. And I think uh, I think all of us could too, if we're just willing to, to just in our own bumbling way, as Jordan Peterson would put it, in our own bumbling way, just learn to, to slowly become like that. You know, maybe you meet a negative situation and you're just like, you know what? For for two minutes, I'm going to act like this is fun, this shitty thing that I'm going through. For two minutes, I'm going to act like that. And then you can go back to being miserable. What happens? And then all of a sudden, you know, a week later, you try three minutes, and then you try five minutes, and then you try ten minutes. And then all of a sudden, it's like, I don't know. I think there's a breakthrough to be had there. I'm out. Peace.